You know, on the, C on the CDJs, where you get master tempo, yeah, you know, where you, can, you, you press the master tempo, but you can, you can change it to plus, uh, you know, the most extreme setting on the pitch control. And then um, what I'll do, I use that with effects, so I can kind of like, I'll do a really tight loop on some kind of, I don't know, like a top end noise, and then use it, and then go right from change the pitch right to the bottom without the master tempo on and then slowly move it up to the top with some delay on it so, so, so you can make kind of whooshing noises and there's there's a million and one things you can do with those CD players that they, they they completely changed the way I DJ because because I previous to that I was using three Technics decks to play vinyl and it was I beg your pardon it was complex it sounded like that because it sounded fucking awful uh, but now CDJs have changed the world. Well, there's a couple of things. One thing I've been doing for years and years and years, and this come, this came from watching um, the first time I saw Danny Tanaglia, which was in 1994, and he played uh, he played um, a basic channel record. It was M4. By, by Maurizio and he played, this is gonna sound bizarre, but he had the a cappella of, uh, it was Derek and Clive, which is Peter Cook and Dudley Moore. And he had bits of Derek and Clive, which he was pu putting on top of this Maurizio uh, track. And what he was doing with it, because, I mean, obviously when you go to a nightclub, there's certain people who go in there and have a quiet drink. And there's certain people that go to nightclubs and do other things. And those people are always the people on the dance floor really making a fuss. Now, when you add in spoken word, and when you do it in a certain way like that, you can bend people's minds. Now, combine that with, with, with not taking that too far and subtly introducing it and then bringing it back to um, records that people know. That's something that you can absolutely can make the difference between when people leave the club they can they can say oh the next day when they've actually come round you know you know you'll be talking about you know the night that you might have had in the club and you'll say do you was it just me or did you hear did you hear what, what I think I heard in the club last night did it say that over the system and there's things like that that I use all the time. I use various bits of spoken word and also I'll play the same record twice in a night but in, in a different way. So early on in my set I might play a record only the second half of it or the first half of it or a recognisable part of it but I'll, I'll overlay it with something else and then later on in the night I'll play the whole record. Um, and it just, it just as a dancer, I, you know, when I go out dancing to DJs, I want someone to. Not only do I want them to play good records, I want them. I want to feel like I've been manipulated. I know that sounds probably a bit strange, but um, but I like to. For the, the best nights I've had and the most amazing experiences I've had listening to DJs of where I felt that someone's not only played great records but they've gone out of the way to mentally to stimulate me, me mentally so whether I've been completely straight or whether I've been in a pickle that I've, they've pushed me and they've needled me and made me think whoa and, and, and also as well I was talking to Darren Hughes from We Love about this because he he was asking me about an, uh, an acapella I was using the spoken word thing and um, there's there's a um, there's always there's always one part of the night that I want. If I go out and I'm and I'm not DJing and I'm listening to a DJ, I'm dancing. I want there's one point in the in in the night that I want I want things to get to musically and I want I want one moment in the night where there's something almost intimidating about the music, which that sounds. I know it sounds really bizarre and abstract, but bear with me. It's it's kind of like. I don't think nightclubs should be should be places where it feels especially safe. I, I, you know, I don't think they, they should be clean, sterile environments. I think they should be places where 
you don't feel you, you feel comfortable but to a certain point and then they sh- I think I think what a lot of people like about nightclubs are that you know these are places where you know anything can happen and, um, and musically I think that there should be points where the music reflects that um, and I always like to try and do if things that occasionally it's gonna sound odd and it's gonna sound a little bit to the point where there's a few people gonna scratch their heads and go I'm not really sure about that but the trick is to balance that up and do it in such a way that you pull it back round with something really really familiar so that the whole experience musically you you've gone out on a limb and you've experimented but then you've made something sound so odd and then the next second you pull it in with something so familiar and those the best sets that I've had are the sets where I've, I've kind of managed to do that and managed and managed to have the moments with the bigger records but yeah managed to to kind of balance it with some kind of experimentation that's really really stimulated me and I and you can see when you look round you look you know you 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 can see it in people's eyes whether you've got to that stage you can see it in people's faces and that to me the best the best times I've had are when when DJs have done that like like the time with Danny Tenaglia playing the um, uh, the Derek and Clive thing which is absolutely bizarre what a strange thing to do but God bless you Danny. You know, he, he really inspired me with that and um, things like that, you know, really stick with me. So that's what I'm trying to do. Um, but I also like, I've got kind of like quite a f- uh, thing for using things in key as well. And and, and often I, I used to do that too much to the point where I'd play records in key just because they're in key with each other and, and not think about the mood of the record and whether the next one was appropriate. Whereas now I'll do it when it's appropriate and kind of uh, try and hold off on it if it's if it's not you know if if it's not building and if it's not building to that kind of like frantic frantic moment. But there's a, there's a million one ways to approach it and. I think I think a lot of DJs are hung up on 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 this, uh, these unwritten rules that are not there. You know, they're kind of like there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions about. Oh, he can't do that. You know, oh my God, he can't do that. Where he pitched it up too much. Oh yeah, that oh, was pitched down too much. Yeah, it sounded terrible. You know, you hear people say this. You hear people say this in clubs all all the time. And to me, the amount of times I've turned around and just laughed at those comments because. There is no rule book. Remember this, there's no rules.